All right. Hey guys, if you're live with us today, obviously um, a little bit behind some technical difficulties. I don't know if you've noticed, but Facebook has been capitalizing on their world for uh, COVID and updating everything apparently in real time for all of us who are trying to do our jobs. So thank you, Facebook, for the updates, but also sarcastically, thanks a lot, Facebook, for the real time updates. So I am here with one of my favorite people. It's Emily. If you've been with me in um, some of my Mission Vision Values class, I mentioned Emily. Um, gosh, I've probably mentioned you before um, when I'm teaching about marketing or social media stuff. Um, Emily is one of my favorite people. And part of the reason because of what she does on her social media, she is very open, very transparent, very real, very authentic. Um, gosh, and just has a huge heart for I don't just life. You're building a life resume. You're not just trying to collect things. You're trying to collect experiences, which is again something else that I think is fabulous. And some of this that I'm saying in real time, you're probably like, "Oh my gosh, Randy, I didn't even know you thought that about me." Yeah, it's so um, sweet. I love it. I'm just and yet, it that's the truth, man. I, I love it. Uh, and so, again, the reason why I'm doing these interviews is that when I look at what happens in our world, if we remove COVID from the current times. And we're just going on with our day-to-day -day basis. Most of us would always go back and say the best advice I ever got. And they'll fill in the blank with usually a random conversation they had with a friend, a family member, or somebody that's important to them. It more than likely isn't going to come from where we're all searching for right now, which is like, you know, I'm looking for all the great thought leaders to be able to help inspire me to do something better. It's usually like, no, my grandma told me to do A, B, and C, or my head pastor said to do this, and that struck a chord, or my best friend said, like, and when I look at that, those happen because of everyday conversations. And I just wanted to bring some everyday conversations. So that's what we're doing. We're just having everyday conversations. I really appreciate your words because I really look up to you, Randy. And I, I everything that you and Ellen do with the kids and just how you interact and how you led your business. So um, a lot of people also, how Randy and I met was he sold me my first home. So I came out of college. And my goal was to live at my parents for a year, save up as much money I can and buy a home. And Randy walked me through that entire process. And I just knew the moment I knew that Randy was a good guy was it was within one week, you sent me like so many listings. There were seven houses that I was like, I want to, I want to view these right now. It was a Friday afternoon. I think Adam was a, only a couple months old. Like he was fresh, yeah. he was a fresh baby. And fresh you spent, baby. Your Friday afternoon with me driving around town to view my, and I found my dream home and I found it and you said, okay, let's do it. And I was like, wow, this kid has a, and you're helping your clients. Like, and I've just grown so much in this house. So I just want to say thank you too. Like you inspire me just as much as I inspire you. So well, you. I appreciate it. That's great. And, and, and how awesome is that to just be the conversation starter though? Because that's the point of why I want to do these interviews is just to just, just talk. And let's just talk about the uh, the interview or the consultation with you. Um, if you ever want to be more intimidated in your life, go to any kind of scenario where you're going to be talking to somebody's daughter while their dad is present. So the consultation happened like mom and dad is there. And so we're like, we're, we're going through and we're talking about buying a home. So here I am taking their most precious thing in the world and going, yeah, I got this. So like, who are you again? Because you got all... youngest three daughters. Yeah. Hey, still, man, it's 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 intimidating to to have somebody's dad sitting there going like, I'm judging you every step of the way to make sure you're going to take care of my daughter. Boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but it was great. So, um, Emily, just real fast. You are obviously to me, but to everybody else. No, you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. You're a photographer. You're a yoga, I don't know if you do yoga instruction, but like I watch you do yoga instruction technically through some of your stories and stuff. But like, yeah, yeah fill us in on the blank on, on what it is that you do because you have a very entrepreneurial mindset. And I don't know if it's just to like, I don't know why. And I want to dig into that. But you do like you do things and you do them really well. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. So I have to say um, kind of like the spirit that I've taken on now really began in 2017. I started watching a lot of Gary Vee. And um, if you're familiar with him, he is all about finding what you love in life, figuring out how you can make a living from there and just go from there. And one of the things that really resonated that he's said that really resonated with me was 
what do you want to do? Okay, do it. And I was like, well, I really want to do this and this and this. And he would say, do it, do it all. Yeah. Do it as much as you can. And so um, I am, I have my bachelor's of interdisciplinary studies, fourth grade math science from a and um, So I did start teaching seventh grade math and science right out the get go. And I've kind of been playing with that around for the past three years. I knew that um, I knew that I wanted to teach, but right now I'm actually in the transition of I'm not. Um, I've I've resigned from my teaching position at public school, okay. and I'm actually moved towards uh, still teaching, but not in the public school aspect. Okay. So that's one kind of transition since the last time you and I talked. Yeah. Has kind of been shifting. I'm really excited about that, and it's something that I've been. I, it's something I've really been thinking about this past year. Is I. I love teaching, but right now it's just, it's not in four cement walls. I want to go, I want to teach more. I want to teach more things, not just seventh grade math curriculum. Well, and then for photography. Um, so, hold on. I want to pause you. Can I pause you? Sorry. Like, no, you're like, no, wait, let me, let me. No, yeah. Yeah, ask those no that's beautiful. So what brought that on? Like to be able to go from like what you just said, I don't want to teach within four concrete walls. And what you actually made the motion was like everywhere and anywhere is now my classroom. What does that mean? Like what, gosh, open up that, that bucket. Like how did you get into that discovery space? So since I started teaching my first year, I taught math and science okay. and I love just educating people on things that I find cool. So for example, the moon cycle, right? This last Thursday, we just had a full moon. And we were with our family and I was just like, hey, that's a that's a waxing gibbous. Did you know that? And we have a little three year old nephew and he's like, what's that? And I was just telling him about the moon phases and all my aunts and uncles are just looking at me like what? Like this, like it's just I just love I have a passion for teaching and it doesn't have to be just about seventh grade math. So when I really when I really found that out about myself, I was like, OK, I want to take this more. I want to just teach people about um, and kind of going back to what you said about the experiences, right? I'm kind of a collector of experiences. I like sharing my experiences. And with that, leaving those four cement walls gives me so much more freedom to, to really take hold of my schedule and my time. Time is the most valuable, non-renewable asset that we're going to get. And, you know, between 8 o'clock or 8 o'clock a.m. and 4 p.m., my schedule is not mine. And I have to follow someone else's rules. And I could go on like with dozens and dozens of stories of, of children that I've impacted personally because I've been their math teacher, but I can also share hundreds of stories of people who have said, you put this on social media and it, it led me to X, Y, Z, right? You shared this about yourself and it's, you shared your experience, like the butterfly experiences yeah. that, that metamorphosis. We can talk about that later too. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where my space is. I don't want to just teach seventh grade math. I want to teach a lot more things that I'm passionate about. So it's kind of the space I'm in right now. It's a really exciting space. I love it. No, it, and what a great what a great moment for discovery. And, and I think it's really something special for you to look at. Your ability to teach is not necessarily a traditional route. And I love the thinking behind that. I do believe there is a necessity for some of the traditional moments. There's like... So I was a painting and drawing major. And one of the things that I used to always have a little bit of a, uh, a soapbox on was that um, when you look at any of these great artists, there was a discovery moment, but it happened within the traditions of art. Now, that's not to say that there's not some people who's a very fraction percentage that's just brilliant out of the gate and they express something. But there's something about art that like I believe that somebody has to be able to, to and this is my opinion again, that they, they've got to be able to venture into the drawing skill. And from that drawing skill to understand how to view something in a way that then you can translate it is really that first step. How can I tr make a translation of my emotions of this literal yeah. transaction? So uh, like Picasso, if you go back and you look at Picasso, right? Everybody, rem rem his cubism is what we remember. Like it's crazy. He looked at things through like 12 different perspectives, sat it on a canvas and we're like, yeah, that's, but go back and look at his early stuff. He was, man, a beautiful, beautiful drafter. He could draw like nobody's business. He was very, very talented in that space. And and that's just this uncovering. Talk about metamorphosis, which is, I bet there's some stories behind that just for yourself in that. Um, but it's, it is, it's a metamorphosis moment. There are needs for traditions. And yet 
there's also the need for somebody like you to go, but there's more or rather, but, and there's more, and this is what more looks like. So that then we can go through a discovery phase of our own. We, we have to have our own discovery phases versus being told to discover. Right. Yeah. I love that. And I'm also, um, I think there's a reason everything happens for a reason, right? So I could be really bitter about I'm, I'm no longer going to be using my college degree that I'm still paying student loans on. But I think that the reason that I had to start out as an educator was because, I mean, I also gained all of that knowledge of how to teach someone, right? Yeah. I can now do like kinesthetic, auditory, visual, and I know how to teach someone something. And I, I honestly just think that I was supposed to be in that classroom. I was supposed to learn how to affect in a positive way people one-on-one -on -one so that I can distribute it. No, what's the opposite of one-on-one? -on -one? Like online? Online? Uh, yeah. Mass. We'll just call mass. Yeah. Mass dish. Okay. Yeah. Well, so okay. it's funny. So I'm listening to, I do a lot of cross training. So I don't, even though I'm in real estate, I don't read much or I don't study much of real estate. I, I do a lot of cross training. I want to look at, um, right now I'm reading through a, a, a lady and watching her conversations. She was a presidential historian and I'm going, uh, and I'm curious about that. And it's interesting to dig some of those things out. And so one of the things of this advertising one that I was going through, it was like, how do we become one-on-one -on -one with the masses? That's advertising. I was like, oh my gosh, that, yeah. How do you create a story that could be one-on-one -on -one with the masses? That juxtaposition, as you know me, like I love those thoughts. Those thoughts that like rip your brain apart, and you're like, I don't know what I believe anymore. Um, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. Well, man. So, and I know we're spending a lot of time here on the education side of things. So, I, I promise you, we'll we'll turn direction into the photography in a second. But when I look at the the education and you you having this, I'm going to go, I'm going to say metamorphosis because I feel like there might be some drawing out of the butterfly side of things. So um, Emily captured a, the whole storying process of a monarch butterfly, actually multiple monarch butterflies going from caterpillar to like blossoming into this beautiful butterfly and, and going out into the world. Like, what does that look like? How did you have your own discovery process? Was there something there that we listening to you could draw out and possibly start moving in that direction ourselves. Sure. So these past two years, uh, as I've been, you know, in my house, I have my front little office, and I'm thinking to myself, like, what do I want my story to be like in the end? What do I want to be able to look back and say, wow, I did this, I did this, experiences, right? Right. And when quarantine started, as soon as we found out that we, like, April was basically done, like, by mm -hmm. April, you're done. Yeah. I was like, okay, what can I provide value with on my social media account that is going to entertain people, but also educate people and give people a gateway to ask themselves questions, right? Because I, so what Randy's talking about is I have milkweed in my back garden, which is what monarch butterflies lay their eggs on and it's what the caterpillars eat. So as soon as again quarantine started, I was like, I'm gonna do it. I found a caterpillar and I was like, I'm gonna order a butterfly um, cage. And, and in elementary school, I had a teacher who did this and we watched the stasers and it was just so magical. So um, what Randy's talking about documenting, I did recordings and pictures of them being eggs. I talked about the research behind it. I was educating people about the process of what the butterfly laid the eggs. We watched it turn into a caterpillar. We watched it eat. I taught them about, again, like the habits of a caterpillar. You know, why do they hang upside down? Why do they eat this? Why do they look like this? And then we turned it into the chrysalis. And that was probably when, the, when it turned into the chrysalis. And that's when I started getting reactions from people. They were like, I've never seen this in the wild. Of course, you know the four stages. But to see it, to, yeah. live it, to experience it was a totally different thing. Um, so... I'm kind of, I feel like I'm going on a, on a No, tangent. you're good. No, this is great. I actually, I'm picking stuff up that I'm going to bring back. I, I, this is, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. Yeah. And so that was one thing too, that I wanted to send the message that, you know, so many people were looking at COVID and saying, oh, this is so sad and this is so bad, but there's also so many things to be thankful for and so many good things that are coming out. And I just wanted to be that light of good thing, right? Yeah. It, I was still in the classroom right now. I couldn't have stayed up that 
first night until 5 a.m. Like I stayed up all night because I was like, it's gonna happen. The research says once it looks like this, it's supposed to happen in this amount of time. And it was like nine hours later. I was like, I'm committed. I'm staying awake. I'm watching this. And it, you know, so those are the things that I'm thankful for yeah. um, from that's gone through COVID. But yes, definitely the metamorphosis change. It definitely there's there's this like little ember that was inside of me and as soon as I just watched that whole stage like I was I was bawling crying the, when the first butterfly left I was like oh my god it's like it was crazy so something definitely lit inside of me for that more metamorphosis change so that's wonderful you know we we always say that uh, the world needs more people who whatever it is that they're doing it, it's what makes them come alive and so like gosh it's going to be a dent put into the world because of that moment I, I think that's a really cool defining moment for you so one of the things that I thought was really special that you said a second ago is that like um, there's this moment of discovery that became a gateway for you. You use the word gateway, which I, 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 I'm picking up on all these little nuances, the word choice and everything. Um, what was that like? Did you, do you think when you saw or ex began to experience gateway, this moment, um, you might have just alluded to it with that little ember moment, but was there this like, literally like almost this Robert Frost moment of like, I looked at the road and it became a, yeah. it literally became a fork. Yeah. And I had to make a decision right there. Um, yeah. Did you, no, like, did it you was, see it? Was there something you could put to words in that? As cliche as it sounds, it really was. I woke up one day and I was like, Oh, there it is. That's it. But it wasn't, it, I was not stagnant in that process. Yeah. There were things behind the scenes, my subconscious, things that I would like, um, like meditating. I'm really big on meditating uh -huh. since the, like the past two years. I've also gone into yoga and did my teacher training. And so the first mantra that I create, well, not created because it's, it's a famous quote. Yeah. Um, do the best you can with what you have, where you have it. It's not the exact quote, but you get it. Yeah, I, I'm good with that. And so, I mean, that was something that I said every day to myself for six months straight, every morning, every night. That's what I would say to myself. That's what I would say to myself in hard situations when I was in the classroom. Do the best you can with what you have, where you have it. And that subconscious led me to different things, right? Led me to different mantras of, you are courageous, you are creative, you are capable. Those characteristics that I want to embody, that's what I really focused on yeah. throughout my days. And that's kind of what sparked it. So to your question of like, when I said I woke up and it hit me, I think that if you were to imagine a timeline, uh -huh. right? Are you familiar with Google Analytics? Yeah. Okay, so if, if you're not familiar with Google Analytics, think of it as like a timeline for your e-commerce website, right? And let's say that today, um, Randy posts this interview talking about monarch butterflies and things like that, and he has a huge spike this week from his website, but he doesn't know why. But if you mark that today, we started talking about butterflies, and that's the reason for your increase, so my point to this is that there have been all of these little things, right? Dot doing this, doing this. And just now is when it sparked. And I think it honestly was just this quarantine time being by myself with thoughts. Um, I've really gotten into like my morning walks with my dog. I don't listen to music anymore. Okay. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't listen to audiobooks. Um, so, and the reason for that is because I've been experimenting with, what do you, what do I do when it's just me? You know, yeah. do I like, it? what am I about? So I kind of just, um, my yoga teacher talks about like being in the boredom, let yourself be bored. Cause that's where the most creative things can happen is when you are just bored. Yeah. So with this quarantine time, I feel like I'm rattling off again. No, you're good. You well, <laughs> you know, this is perfect. You, you've got so much good stuff. I hope, I hope people are listening in between the lines. Like, right. You're telling a story. But you're, you're telling a story where there, there's very distinct markers. Like, there's very distinct markers in everything that you're saying. You're not rambling. It, it's very, it's actually very precise. You're, I love this. And I'll be happy to go back and, and actually I will. I want to point out some of these things that like what you're saying and why it's so important. And I think going back to like the Robert first, right? The Robert Frost quote, like I found the roads, the two diverged and I kind of chose one. I think now is at a point where, you know, I've been going and going and now I'm finally looking back and be like, wow, I've, I've 
gone a far way. You know, it doesn't feel like that because I'm picking one step every day. Yeah. But eventually you're, you're so onto a different route that you're like, I can't even see the other road. Yeah. Well, so here's the thing. When you look at so much that happens, um, not enough people want to give credit to mindset. Um, and especially in an, in an activity based or an entrepreneurial mindset kind of, uh, of, of activity. A lot of people who listen to me that I'm connected to, a ton of entrepreneurs. They get frustrated with me a lot of times, even when I'm having conversations with them, because I start digging into some of these questions of mindset. And, and think about what you just said, though. Like you are you are already practicing the way you were going to play. You were just building into that space. Like, yeah, you, you didn't know necessarily it was going to lead to this day. And everything you're doing, though, was making a decision to 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 be certain about where you were going. Um, mm -hmm. Like if an airplane, if I took off in an airplane at uh, IAH, right, and I'm flying to Los Angeles. So here I am on an airplane. In our heads, it goes in a direct line to Los Angeles. In the reality, the thing is going like this the whole time. They're, they're course correcting the whole way there to make sure that you land. And it feels like a straight line. If I just, like got in the sky, pointed at Los Angeles, and then kicked my legs back, I'm gonna veer off course even by like a small fraction. Like if I was only like 0.01% off course or a degree off course, over that kind of trajectory, I will end off in way, uh, I, like I don't know the actual math because I'm not a mathematician like you are, but that's oh. it. And, and so and so when you when you look at our lives, so much of what you were doing really was this moment of, Something is bigger than this, and I have to discover it. I have to discover who I am. I have to see what's happening right now. I have to embrace all the craziness. I have to embrace it, and I have to be okay with if everything changes, am I okay? Mm -hmm. And as, like I always call it toilet time. I don't think people, like, we don't even go to the toilet anymore without our phones. Like, I think it's disgusting. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I, but we go to the I, toilet, with, and yeah. we've, we've lost the ability to think creatively. I think mm -hmm. because like our, I think we are already creative beings. I think we were born creative. We occupy too much of our mind for it to shut down long enough to be creative. I think that's the challenge. And so what you're saying is, is, is I think a beautiful thing. Like you, you began to build, I, Gary Keller says it this way. So Gary Keller's the, the head of, of, um, Hold on, can I make a point when you said creative? Yeah. Because I also think that creative, a synonym for that is resourceful. Think about how many people right now like we're that. having to be resourceful, and it's coming across as creative. So I, keep going with no, that's thing. good. I actually really like that. Creative is re, it is resourceful, um, but what Gary says is it's, it everything is slow, 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 fast. Like that's how it happens. It's a slow building process to where, like what you said, it feels fast when we look back and we go, "Holy shit! I got this far. This like I was just walking." And then in the yeah. discovery process, we, we, we've become something. Um, yeah. Gosh, this, go. is, this is like, I feel like we should go back to Rome and be wearing togas, like sitting there like, you all right? Right. This. So to go back on what you said too, because I know that you wanted to talk about self-care and I yeah. do not want people to think that this is a walk in the park. It's hard, but you have to actively make the decision. Am I worth it? Am I worth it? So um, one of my favorite podcasts to listen to is called Working Ag Against Gravity. Working, Working Against, against gravity. gravity. Okay. And it's primary. Um, well, I don't. I don't want to like. Uh, I don't want to butcher what they're about. But one of my favorite podcasts is about self care, and sh and she talks about self care does not have to feel good. Meaning self care can be taking a bubble bath, you know, eating a little thing of chocolate or taking a nap, but it can also be walking in the morning without headphones. You know, I, I really love to jam in the morning and yeah. I love, I love intaking information, but I need to force myself to stop and be with myself. And that in and of itself, like it is not easy meditating when you first start, it's hard, but it's the benefits outweigh the pain in like in the moment. Yeah. So I just want to touch on that because I don't want people to think that this is an easy, like Robert Frost said, that road, it's tough. Yeah. Not a lot of people go on that road. And so, you know, well, you're going to have to machete your way through it. <laughs> but you were in, and, and gosh, I'm just going to, and I guess this is just turning into an Emily Price Fest. But look at what you were doing um, 
before all this, what you did in the classroom, the vulnerability that you showed yourself, like you posted about how you were teaching. I used to watch that going, I guarantee you, there are people watching this going, oh my gosh, I can't believe she is doing this. Oh my gosh, this is a pain in the butt. Oh my, because it's vulnerable, right? And there's people who have, gosh, judgy pants all over social media. And I'm like, how awesome for her, because I absolutely loved it. How awesome for her to go, no, this is this is me discovering me. And I thought it was brilliant, but you're very vulnerable to put yourself out there in a professional manner because most people judge professionals. Like they are like, oh my gosh. And then to get out there and, and put on your ukulele and to play a song and sing online to everybody we're like, hey, here it is. To get out there and to get down and start doing yoga poses because like all of that is vulnerable. And, and you know for a fact, we live in unfortunately in a very judgmental world that you just gave your vulnerability up. But how much power was in that moment to go, I'm me, I'm unapologetically me. You like me or you don't, and that's okay, but I will not stop choosing There's to be me. I love, um, I really love Casey Musgraves. And so she, she's an artist. She has a saying in one of her songs where it's like, you can't be everyone's cup of tea. You know, like I'm drinking green tea right now. Some people love green tea. Some people are like, that's gross. I want coffee. And so as soon as you realize that, that's okay. Um, and then to go off to, so what Randy's talking about was the, my first day of teaching, um, like that weekend before I recorded like a quick four minute video of me telling my students what I'm about, how I'm excited for the year and that it's okay to make mistakes in the classroom. And then I played my ukulele and I like, you know, I did my blooper reel. So that's kind of just what he's talking about, just like for reference. But yeah. I will, I want to go back and I want to talk something about that too. So do you, um, I'm going to talk about my YouTube channel right now. Yeah, okay. dude, please do. I want everybody to follow you. Like at the end of this, I'm going to make sure people are following you. I want you to have the followership. I'm inspired by who you are. You are so sweet. I really appreciate that. Well, just, just for reference, my YouTube channel is still under construction. So, but for right now, the change that it is making is, when I started teaching, I put my math tutorials under my name, Emily Schnesky. Um, and since I'm now backing out of the classroom and I'm, you know, my passion isn't for two-step equations and finding the volume of a cylinder. Um, <laughs> so I took down all of my math video tutorials. Um, I think I still might leave my like first day of teaching because you're right, that does inspire other yeah. teachers, right? We still need those teachers. So um, it's shifting now more towards, you know how you created your name, Brandy Olive? You have your own hat right now? Yeah. That's, I'm, that's what I'm wanting to do for me, right? To figure out who I am, to brand myself as Emily Wachneski. And I just have all these spigots of all of my different things, all of my, like my photography. I've got a couple of things that I can't talk about right now. Yeah, um, good. I'm, I'm so excited. So. That's where it's going to now. So there's only like one video on my current YouTube channel saying that like, hey guys, this used to be math video tutorials, um, but I am going to be starting to produce content this month for it. So stay tuned on that. But yeah, and like the experiences, that's what I want to show people is that it's okay to make mistakes, right? Like, hey guys, come along. I'm going to go down this path. And if you want to follow me, come on for it. Come on with me because I'm going to show you what it's like in case you're too scared to do it. Like, we can do it together. Yeah. That's kind of where it's going now. That's awesome. There, I, and I think we're missing that. We're missing tribes. I think that's one of the challenges that we're missing in, in today's economy. Um, and yet COVID is showing that tribe is still so important. And people are starting to realize that, man, I, I hope what COVID does at the end of the day is it has called us all to understand that we all have this moment of what you're creating solidarity. None of us are perfect. None of us have it all together. We're all struggling with the same things. We're all just doing it by ourselves. And so I'm grateful for the people who are vulnerable like you. I'm not even as uh, that vulnerable. Like, I'll be honest, like I still play very much a character a lot of times. Like that's just, too, it, there's still some discovery there. Like, I, like, and I'm drawn to people who are like you. And there's, there's a, there's a handful of those leaders that, that I look at. Um, I can see this being really big. I love it. I want to stop you right there and just like, I don't want, cause you just said like, I'm not as vulnerable as you. Randy, you are one of my first friends who have had a Facebook live. If you take a step back from someone else's perspective, you are doing so much for your team. You really are paving. Like 
I've never seen a real estate person like you do more and you are creating such a gap for your industry. Wow. And that's a good thing. And anytime, literally, I can have someone, a friend in Wyoming, she's like, oh, we're selling our house. And I'm like, call Randy. He's in Texas, but I bet you he I can bet. help me. Like, so I don't want you to undervalue yourself. And I don't want anyone else out there to compare. That's one thing, too, that that's going to be my thing. Do not compare yourself. Because when I started my photography business two yeah. and a half years ago, the thing that kept me in my little, like, cubby for so long was comparing myself. Like, you're not as good as her. Well, Emily, she's four years ahead of you like <laughs> yeah not better than you you know so I don't I want people to have the courage to start where they're at at their own foundation and like you know put your blinders on look at where you're gonna go because yeah. someone over there is also comparing themselves to you well what I receive that what how good is that what a, what a great little moment gosh this is why I love you you're you're fabulous with what you like seriously like everything that you're doing is such a selfish moment. Like what I'm, I think that's what I admire most. Like it's a huge quality for me. Like if you start looking at my values, there's this underlying moment when you, when you read through my values, that is there's a selflessness that like I am just drawn to. And I, and I think that's kind of like what it is that you're doing and everything that you touch is a very selfless act. Like, um, are you familiar with Khan Academy? Yes. Being a teacher. Like, so when I was going through, Oh gosh, economics, and I went back to college as a 30 year old. I was like, I don't, I don't remember math. And so I would watch his videos. And then I started looking like, he's got like a billion videos on a billion different subjects. And he just like, he had this desire to teach. Well now like Adam, all these years later, now he's got this nonprofit, like the app, the Khan Academy kids app. I can give that to Adam and I know it's going to be safe because there's no advertisements on it. There's no pop-ups. There's no nothing that's happening in any of that space. It's just, Adam using his brain for the way that he loves to use it, which is just discovery and learning and all that stuff. And I don't have to worry about what's happening. I can totally see a comparison in that space of like, gosh, just watching your stories of like, man, the next, I don't know what the next butterfly thing is, but I'm going to be drawn to the screen watching you unfold that. It was, it actually was special. The way you did it was very special, but I don't know. I think there's something about you that's very intentional about the way that you do all of your stories um, on your social media. It's, it's all very intentional. Like, I mean, even I'm going to be even weird, like talking about feminine products, like, it, like, yeah. that, right. How more vulnerable could you get? But how much more real could you get? And how many people out there were going, you know, I was actually curious about that, but I didn't, I wasn't going to take a step. Right. And you know what? I mean, I can't even take the credit for it. I'm telling you 2017, it was this season of my life. Three years ago, Gary V. He talks about your intentions, and yeah. another thing I think you're really good at too, like with your backdrop and everything like that, is what do you want to give people the attention to? And what I mean is, um, for example, like my classroom in my, in my classroom, my four cement wall classrooms, I had poster size letters cut out, and every quarter I would change them. So one count one quarter the letters read be accountable or like accountability and this past this past quarter it was be resourceful and so you're not even realizing that you're reading those words every day but you are reading those right. words every day and um dang it i lost my train of no. thought but it you see what you're saying that I was intentional about what's happening behind me. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Intentional. That's the reason that I did it. And I'm going to show you this too, because it goes, you, what was the, you tell the storytelling. What is the name of your, uh, your training? That uh, well, I went to yeah. So I just, I, now I just talked about the way I just, mission, vision, values. I, I simplified it so that people could understand it on modern terms. So it's just mission, vision, values. Got it. Okay. I'm going to show you. So, because I want to I want to show people that like if you whatever you want to be like I really wanted to be intentional and so these were like list of words characteristics that I wrote out so I really am intentional with my own attention what am I looking at every day I even went back and um because I do like blogs of myself just recordings of like me going through the day it was hysterical I was watching some from last night three years ago I took computer paper and I wrote all of these words on individual computer papers and I taped them across my house. And if you walked into my house 
it literally looked like sight words for adjectives. <laughs> so that I just wanted to share that with people. Like whatever it is you're trying to be, write it on a piece of paper, post it in your bathroom, your bedroom, your office, your front door, and it will lead you there. You will get to that point one day where you wake up and it was just like me. I know what I want to do. Yeah. I want to teach people about caterpillars. I want to teach to everyone. I want to inspire, like empower. So, I love, well, I man, and, and there's so much power to the subconscious. And and a few of the things that I even do when I'm training on mission, vision, values is to help people to understand the power behind their subconscious as the way their values are. And and I'll give a quick version of that story. Um, if I I do an exercise where I force everybody like to like in man, 10 seconds or less. I want you to spit out the five things that you think about when you're considering your, whatever it is that you're building a mission, vision, values about, right? So most of the time that it has to do with business. And so I tell people as a real estate agent, like owning a real estate agent business, I, what are the first five words that pop into your head when you think about real estate or real estate business? And like they start writing it down. And what's really interesting is those who get into this mode of like difficult, um, or they start writing out and I, and I don't want to give too much cause I don't want real estate agents to feel like they got a bad rap, but there are those that will go like hard, difficult conversation, like pain in the ass. And they'll, they'll put some of these things out and I'm like, so you need to understand the thing that you just devoted your life to your subconscious is feeling as if this is just a pain in the ass. So how do you believe that your response is going to be subconsciously fighting against your conscious efforts? You're in a, you're in a battle against yourself. So there's so much power in the subconscious to, to put those things out there makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I think too, like those are just stereotypes that we've learned. Those are just things that we have grown accustomed to. Um, there's a book that I'm reading right now. I can't remember the title of it, but it, it talks about that, how yeah. we are born into like, unless I was born in America, in Texas, I wouldn't be speaking English. You know, if I was born on the other side of the world, I'd be speaking a different language. So I think those are the stereotypes that we yeah. just need to break ourselves. And I think that you just, you just do a really great job in coaching. Well, I appreciate that. Well, you know, so talk about the subconscious. Uh, nobody's asked me about this yet, but like this is a picture of Batman sitting down at a diner, drinking a cup of coffee and a piece of pie. And it's um, my cousin did the drawing at Ryan Ebel. Um, and I love that. I saw it. I loved it. Ellen bought it for me from Adam at, for like my first Father's Day present. I love that. Super, superheroes, they're, they're ordinary people. Every single one of us every day are putting on a cape. We're putting on a disguise. We're going to the diner. We're eating a slice of pie and drinking a cup of coffee. Our goal is just to impact the world at a much higher level. And so that's very, very purposely put right here in my office so that every day I when I'm that. doing this, I love that. that's, in the, that's what I'm looking at. So I, I, I think it, it makes a difference. And then obviously being a gift from Adam is a really big deal because he gave me one of my favorite titles. Speaking of, there he is. <laughs> he just... He just got, got home from exploring. Okay, Emily, I know that we have gone a million different directions. And no, I told you we we're going to go in an order, but like, man, I, I didn't know some of the things that were going to blossom out of this conversation. So before we end, let me give you the opportunity. Like, was there something that you were wanting to bring to light, something you want to talk about? Um, before I give you the moment, like, not to, not to go towards any of the cause or like, hey, y'all check this out, but like, Anything just in your like outline that you weren't able to say yet that, that you want to make sure you bring some um, some attention to? I have a couple notes. I know. I was that's why I want to make sure I address it because you'll later you go, yeah, I wanted to say. Um, okay, well I'll touch I'll, this will this will be what I end on. So okay. this morning, um, I saw your post about do you care as a leader, you need yeah. to ask yourself this question. Do you care? Can you help me? Can I trust you? So if there was one message that I, I want to get out to people, um, and I know that we didn't talk about like the photography or like the entrepreneurship as much we did, but as like, that is my business right now, right? That is one of my businesses. I'm a photographer. I photograph weddings, engagements, uh, seniors, like literally you name it. I could photograph it, gender reveal parties, maternity, milestone, like everything. And so I just want people to know that like, if you are in the need of something, if you want a moment captured, call me. If you are wanting like, you know how we did the photo shoot with your family. Yep. It was a Saturday morning. Like, do you want photos with your kids? It's just like nice photos. Call me. We can set something up. Or, you know, like, is it, is it like you want your whole thing, that wedding experience? Cause my thing too, is that like, 
I am all about those special moments. Yeah. And I think that's really where my, uh, my, again, my passion for those experiences comes through my work as photography is people look at that and they're like, wow, I would never think to look at it like that. That's a beautiful picture, but like, or even moments, right. Yeah. Capturing moments in time. Um, so just that you can, no. I do care about you. I can help you and you can trust me. There you go. That's uh, absolutely you. You wouldn't be, we wouldn't be having this conversation if I didn't want to put you out to the world. So I, I have no bones. So that, cause it's always easier when you hear somebody else tell the story, use her for photography, support small business, especially hers, because I'm really excited to see where she's going to take her life and contribute back to us. And unfortunately some of that requires a tool called money. And so like, I don't want to make that a big deal, but I do want to make sure like support the people who are just giving us a beautiful thing to watch and Emily and everything that she touches is giving us a beautiful thing to watch. And so support her and all that stuff. And she's brilliant anyways with her photography skills. So, um, what is your, what is your handle? Like I'm already friends. So is your handle your last name? Because that's going to really cause some issues here. So I have two accounts. I just have like my personal account that I share like the butterflies on. And then I have my photography account. Okay. So, um, how about we do this? I will, I'll funnel people through my personal account and then that way they can find my other things. Cause I have like the link tree in my bio. Okay. So we'll do my personal account. It's Emily, E M I L Y dot Wishnesky, the long last name, W I S C H N E W S K Y. Wait, well, anybody watching us live, what I did is I pulled up the chat. And so they're going to see, you don't see it, but the recording of it, they're going to see the live chat pop up. So it's, it's out there. It sees your name and everything. I want any and everybody to come follow you for sure. Um, yeah, what else? Instagram handle and you can search, I mean, I don't, um, you can search my Facebook too, but really I'm primarily right now I'm on Instagram and YouTube. Awesome. Well, let me ask you this. So now as we're finalizing, is there something that we can all, now that you have an audience that we we're sharing in this moment that you would say is um, that you're about. So is there a cause or something that you want to bring light to that you get the opportunity with just being in this moment with me and with the audience I that's watching that. us live? Yes. So there is an organization called Camp Kesem. Kesem with is a, with a K. Okay. And it's a nationwide student ran, like college student ran nonprofit. And what it does is we fundraise money throughout the year to send kids to camp whose parents have been affected by cancer. So okay. from the age of five to 18, kids can sign up. And the requirement is like their parents, mom or dad, either has to have passed away from cancer, in remission from cancer, or currently going through uh, therapy for it. Okay. And so the month of April is when they had their silent auction, but because of COVID, it got canceled and they're now doing online based. Okay. So you can go to Camp Kesem. Spell that real fast. Camp is C A M P. Kind of. You never know. It could be a K. Yeah. And then Kesem, Kesem is K E S E M. Okay. So yeah, I went to A and M. If you want to donate, woo, to uh, Texas A&M, there's a link. Uh, you can go through that. Or if you just want to make a general donation, it takes about $500 for one kid, $500 okay. per counselor. And so that would be amazing because we're trying to raise a bunch of money since they didn't get to fundraise because of COVID. So that's, okay. that would be awesome. Very good. Sweet. Well, I've got it up here too so people can Google that and go give. Um, and especially all you Aggies, now you know something else that y'all can be connected to because y'all are your own little Ooh. cult following there with Aggies. Right. And I can say that because I'm married to an Aggie and I get it. Um, wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, Emily, I think you're fabulous. I'm really excited to watch what's going to unfold. Um, you have complete confidence that I'll share it all anytime I see it because I really, I, I, we need more people like you to come alive in this world. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye.